From ClarkWoods.com, this is Horribly Off Topic, episode number 196. I'm Chris. And I'm Steve, and we're here with you on Memorial Day. Yes. Uh, thank you for your service. What? I've never served in No, anything. I mean, I'm thanking whoever might be out there listening. If oh, they happen okay. to be... Although, Memorial Day is for... For, 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 for dead people. For dead people. Well, yeah. there might be ghosts. I don't be... think there's ghosts that listen to the podcast. There could be ghosts that listen to the podcast. But, you know, if you if you are a person that listens, that has a, a friend or whatever that, that died or a well, relative just... and you, you want to remember them, do that today. Wait, let's just say... The, the, the or shot... do that yesterday because you're probably going to listen to this tomorrow. The shot that was heard around the world... Was it was in Concord or Lexington, just just around the bend here, right? Was the start of the revolution. Okay. So let's say that there's a the Revolutionary War veteran, okay, who has been kicking around for two hundred plus years, right, as a ghost. And I think at this point they've kind of done all the ghost type stuff that they could do. So maybe they're looking for something new, Steve. And they were like, I hear, I hear about these podcasts from these from these younger guys who are dying in wars that they that we shouldn't be shouldn't even be fighting. But um, I hear from these guys that there's these things called podcasts, and maybe I should listen to one. And so so that Revolutionary War vet. Uh, maybe a guy by the name of Andrew Clark who fought, uh, fought in uh, Captain Smalley's regiment, I think. You know, well, no, he was down the Cape. Uh, but but the, maybe maybe some. Rev- Are they fighting on the Cape? Well, no, they went on an alarm up to uh, wherever it was. But but my my. Oh, ancestor, you and your genealogy. I you know I'm just saying maybe there's a Revolutionary War ghost out there who is listening to this podcast, and I want to thank them for their service. There was a, an episode of the Comedy Bang Bang podcast that mm. uh, they were talking about. Uh, this is that a comedy show? No. Uh, they they were talking about this town in Scotland where this guy does ghost tours. Mm-hmm. And uh, that he, the, like, you know, the, the town is just full of ghosts, and it keeps on getting more full because people yeah. keep on dying. Well, I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Well, the thing is, like, if if ghosts were real, mm, I definitely would, want Melissa McCarthy to help me they out would, with that. They, no, I wouldn't want any of those ladies anywhere near. <laughs> I mean, like, what about Chris Hemsworth? No, enough. What about Chris Hemsworth's abs? It, it was a funny enough movie to watch once. Okay. I don't want to... <laughs> I, I still haven't seen it, but it, I, I think I own it for some reason. I think it came with some package deal, and I... Was it about. a nice package? Uh, Hemsworth's package is pretty nice, I think. So, what I was saying is mm. that there would be no end of ghosts ever. Yeah. Because people keep on dying, and there's always going to be more go- There's always going to be more dead people than there are alive people currently. In fact, it's exponentially going to be more ghosts. Yeah, there's than, always going to be. alives. So, so, why does that preclude a ghost from listening to our podcast? It precludes it because ghosts probably don't exist. Because if there was ghosts, there would be way too many ghosts. And so, like, everybody would constantly be haunted. Oh, then they'd be bumping into each other a lot. Yeah, or, like, they'd be fighting people to haunt certain people that are... That that sounds... I think think you should pitch that. That sounds like a pretty good... Like, ghosts fighting over who gets to haunt, you know, a particular house or or, or whatever. Call it too many ghosts. (laughs) Too many ghosts, yeah. I mean, you 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 could use it as a metaphor... As a metaphor for the whole American experience. I mean, so you've got in the, the ghosts of indigenous people who have been here for centuries and centuries and centuries. And they want to continue to haunt their places that they've always had. And in come this new wave of, uh, of British uh, and Chris, French and, and Spanish ghosts. You wanted and they're a, like, you know, get out of here. We're, you wanted we're, a new play. I just gave I, you I, a fucking I, idea. I, I don't want a new play. I'm never writing a play again. Write a fucking play about too many ghosts. Too many ghosts? About I, I, ghosts, I, like, fucking trying to, like, fighting over, like, the right to haunt a person. I, well, That's an original idea. It's, we it's, just came up with an ju- original well, idea. you came up with it. It's your original then idea. Then you could you say it's write written it. by Steve Woodbury and Chris Clark. Okay. But I'm not, not going to write a play. Can I, make, can, I, can I make it a story or a novel? A novel's fine. Okay. I want I want final edit, though. You want final final edit. Okay. All right. I think I can do that. All right. So, After I and I want my name my, on the my, book. My other like not just projects. in the acknowledgments. No, no. I, want, I, mean, I, I mean, I think you get cover. you get primacy. You're you're the one. Uh, maybe it's uh, Steve Woodbury as told to be Christopher Clark, <laughs> and I'm like really tiny, like like you're, Alex. You'll Haley. be my ghostwriter. <laughs> you 
<laughs> yes. Well, I mean, if you ever seen the, uh, um, I, I, be, I bet you everybody that was listening was like, "Why haven't you fucking said that already?" <laughs> they were waiting. They They're were like, just... "What the fuck? You have a joke there. It's perfect. <laughs> it's, it's waiting." We should have left it the whole show, and the, the very last thing would have been that. That could be our new. That could be our new outro. Is there's a joke that's obvious from minute one, and we don't make it until the end, and then that's when the show ends. Yeah, because we were like, because just, we won't remember that. It'll just like when, like earlier in the, in the series, I was mm. eating an apple or doing <laughs> other fucking things to annoy the audience. Let's do that. Like, <laughs> Let's do that. Um, uh, uh, what was I going to say? Um, something about ghosts or or Hemsworth's package. Um, uh, we no. we could talk about Avengers finally. We could talk about. We he, don't have he, we don't have emails. He has a nice he has a nice package in Avengers. I, I did not notice. No, I, I mean, I, I mean, I mean that they put a nice package together for him. Uh, the the um, like hundred foot tall dwarf and Groot team up to give him a nice package in the form of an of an axe. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That, that was pretty was, cool. Uh, That's kind of skipping to the end, but you know. Well, I mean, I think it's nice that they uh, they have somebody who is uh, normally a little person mm. be a very large person. Yes, they, they in the in the run up to. The movie coming out, um, somebody asked, you know, would we ask the directors, would we know uh, Peter Dinklage when he showed up in the movie? And they said, yeah, it might take you a minute, but yes. And around that same time, people were speculating that he was the voice of, uh, I think it was Corvus Glaive, one of the children of Thanos who gets uh, his ass handed to him by Captain America and Black Widow. Um, and they, people were picking apart that because that clip came out online, like a 30 second clip of the Avengers beating up on two of the children of Thanos. And people were like, that, that's Dinklage's voice. And I listened to it. I was like, what, what the fuck are they talking about? I don't, maybe it's Peter Dinklage's voice, but how on earth could you tell from, he, he has like one line. It's half whispered. He's like, I can't. And they got this one line in the entire sequence that was, and anyway, so it turned out that Peter Dinklage was not that guy. Peter Dinklage was. Uh, a huge version of himself. Yeah. So which that's is, fun. Which is, which is nice. I, I don't I, know. Like, uh, we'd have to actually ask him this, but mm. does, he, does he feel that, like, that's that's okay? He's not, like, appropriating, like, tall people. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. Was, was Peter Dinklage appropriating tall people? <laughs> that is a long fucking title. No, 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 but I need something for the description. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Din- Dinklage appropriating tall people. Um. So, where we, we should we start? I mean, I could, I could do. Well, you started at the beginning uh, of the movie. A whole, whole show. Oh yeah, three part. Three we've part. already we, we forgot to say spoilers, but if you haven't seen Infinity War yet, <laughs> a month and a half in, then um, uh, it's your fault, not ours. Yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah. Um, like half the fucking planet has seen. Well, I, I think more than half the planet has probably seen this fucking movie at this point. Yeah, I think so. It's like it's the most successful summer blockbuster ever. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, I, I yeah, I I think if you haven't seen it, um, uh, we should put a big honking spoilerific, like you know what you're in for. Title is is what should uh, what should be there uh, this week. I don't know what it what it'll be. A heavy flow of spoilers. Heavy <laughs> heavy flow of spoilers. <laughs> is it going to be a heavy flow? I mean, I, I mean, can we talk about this for a little while, Steve? I mean, I, sure. I, 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 okay. So, so you, 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 I imagine you have feelings. I have feelings. I have strong feelings. I, I, I really, I don't have, have I don't necessarily have strong feelings. I, 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 it, it's one of the things that I liked about it Mm. was things that I didn't like. I don't know. Both, both, uh, the last Jedi Mm. and, uh, infinity war are like bad endings. Mm. They're not not good things happening in in the oh, okay. movie. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah. So mm-hmm. like, but the way it was done in Infinity War mm-hmm. just resonated with me yeah. more than the way it was done in the Last Jedi. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and how? Why do you think that is? I don't know. Mm. I maybe maybe through our conversation we can figure we can, that we out. Can, we can deduce that. We can, uh... um, yeah, I mean, I would say it affected me more. I've seen it. Did I see it twice or three times? I can't tell. you. I don't that. know. I, I think maybe I only saw it twice, which really freaks me out because I, I would have thought I'd seen it three times. But it's a long film, so um, the 
especially the first time I remember getting to that point. And I think it's in part because I've been so invested in the series as a whole for a really long time. I mean, it's got... But no, you know, The Last Jedi has that too, in the sense that when Luke disappears, spoilers for Last Jedi, um, <laughs> a, a year later, <laughs> a year later. Um, when Luke disappears, that is the culmination of a journey that's that's um, been th- way longer than the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Let, let's just, I, I don't want to try to do all the math, but what I was going to say is, that, you know, um, in huh. terms of being invested in the plight of the characters there at the end of uh, Infinity War, if you've followed even a fraction of the MCU movies up to this point, you can really get affected by who just sort of disappears into dust, who's left behind and has to watch their their loved ones disappear into dust. Um, I think it can be a very affecting thing, whereas the end of The Last Jedi, yeah, if... I mean, Luke disappearing... You can you might have very conflicted feelings about that, but then the rest of them kind of being in dire straits. I don't know. And, and they're I, still in dire straits at the end. Like yeah. they 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 barely get away. Like at least it, like the Empire Strikes Back. Mm. Like they they're able to escape Cloud City and they're yeah. like able to regroup because like they're, they're there's a plan forward. We're gonna go get Han and right. whatever. Like well, yeah. you, you don't know that, but you figure that's what they're gonna do. Yeah, they're gonna. He's not dead. He's frozen right. in carbonite. Exactly. Yeah. Um, now, let me ask you this. So my, my daughter, my older daughter, Kaylee, is really mad about Infinity War. Why? Because Um, it's a bad ending? (laughs) Because of the, she was not expecting uh, that. I don't know what she was expecting, but especially, um, because she, she's 12. She's allowed. Uh, She has a little crush on Tom Holland. So who plays Spider-Man. Well, he's, he's, a, he's a dreamy young man. He's a dreamy young man. Um, and uh, But I just think in, she's invested in, in him. She really liked Black Panther and liked all of those characters. And so, you know, to see a lot of people who... I think there's also a dissonance in her head because she is aware, even more so than we would have been aware if we'd read magazines back in the day when we were 12, she's aware that there's another Spider-Man movie that's going to happen. And there's probably another Black Panther movie that will happen somewhere along the line. So how the hell can they kill all of these people at the at the end of the movie? And she's just she was she was livid as we left the theater. She was really pissed off. Whereas Melody, who usually can't stand all of those things, this movie she she was right there in it. She was she was all, at the end of it. She said, "That's it. It's over." Hmm. And it was one of the longest fucking movies she's ever sat through in the theater. Um, it was very strange for for me. That was the second time I saw it. Um, I don't know. So it's the... What's your feel? I mean, I, we're back at the ending. We, we haven't even started at the, at the beginning. But yeah. what's what's your feeling on on that ending? Since that's where we're already at. I mean, do you think... Or, or just in general, what's your feeling about the people who died versus... Uh, turned into dust. Uh, it, are, is everybody dead, or are they bringing people back? They're obviously going to bring people back. Yeah, but like they have to do something. But is Loki dead? Hopefully. Okay. Like, right. I'm, I'm hoping. Like, cause like, like this is right at the beginning. So yeah. it's the beginning of the movie. Spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Let's just go through the deaths. Yeah. Uh, Loki actually dies. It's not mm-hmm. like a, a snapping of a finger. Right. And, yeah. Uh, and Thanos makes they make a point of Thanos saying no resurrections this time or no tricks this time or whatever he says. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So you, Lo- Loki's dead in your mind. I think so. I I agree. I'm there with you. Uh, Heimdall and the rest of the Asgardian bodies that are kind of around there at the. Heimdall's the guy with the sword who... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Do you think he's dead? Yeah, Idris Elba. Idris he? Elba, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he's dead. I think, uh, like, Thor is just gonna set up shop on Earth. Yeah. Because, yeah. uh... I think it's it's funny, because at the end of Thor 3, they're mm. like, oh, we're just gonna resettle. Yeah. <laughs> or just get fucking destroyed. Yeah. In it, it, and it said, I think, you know, there is some anger out there on, on the internet towards uh, Infinity War, as there is towards every fucking thing. I think some of the justified anger is that um, Taika Waititi, the director of Thor Ragnarok, and, um, and Chris Hemsworth did this fantastic job in actually finally making Thor and his whole franchise interesting and funny. Like, I, 
you know, I love all the Marvel movies, but I'm not gonna um, I'm not gonna sit here and defend Thor two or Thor very much. So, like you mean the, the like I I literally do not know what happened in the middle of that movie because I was <laughs> you fell completely asleep. Completely asleep. Yeah, I so, was snoring in the theater. Yeah. So so anyway, so people I think are understandably upset that everything that Waititi and and Hemsworth did, including the loss of the eye. Um, all of Asgard kind of being on that ship, it all seems to have been undone by the Russo brothers in literally the next movie that Thor shows up in. Um, but I think they wanted it to have those kind of consequences. I think they... And and yet, they made a point there. You didn't see what happened to Valkyrie. You didn't see what happened to Korg, like the, the, the stone guy and the badass female warrior. So they either died off screen or they survived yeah they went off on and and did something um and uh so i think that's neat because he could yeah i think you're right he could still settle on earth but those guys could sort of come along with him or something yeah um and uh and 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 i think the bonus of getting rid of a lot of thor's supporting cast for this movie is that then thor gets to hang out with groot and rocket yeah um which i thought was you mean tree and rabbit (laughs) yes the way he said rabbit was kind of like the way Winnie the Pooh says rabbit. <laughs> like, rabbit. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Uh, next time I see it, I will have Listen, to. Listen, rabbit. <laughs> um, so, so you're thinking, going back to the dead people thing. So uh, what, what's your feeling on um, Gamora? That's, that's the interesting one I've seen people go back and forth on, on the internet is because of the way Gamora died... Um, but Gamora didn't die. They like I think uh, he got his eyes shot out at in his lobby. But like the I think uh, Chopper healed him back at uh, Water Seven. So or maybe that was Sodom. I don't know. You don't have to do the slurping. <sighs> um, no. But do you think Gamora is dead? Um, maybe. Sure. I don't know. You don't care. <laughs> there, there, I mean, like, if it, if it's if there's going to be any sort of consequences, mm. then yes, she should be dead. Yeah. I, yes, I'm 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 with you there. I it's she. I wonder if they could find some way to because James Gunn is still going to make Guardians of the Galaxy three, and she is such a like vital part of that franchise. I I wonder if they could still find a way to make her fit in there, even though. All right, so even if she is dead, so Guardians three, like let's just say the disappeary folks come back, yeah, and she's the only one that's gone, yeah. Maybe maybe Guardians three, the plot is to find a way to get her back. So it's like it's a it's the search for Spock, basically. Yeah, I see. I think I'm. She's the only one that I think because I think well. Then there's also the Vision, who literally has the stone yanked out of his forehead and like half of his fucking forehead is gone. Um, but he g- goes kind of white and gray, which is one of the looks the Vision has had. In which the is comics. also what happens to Optimus Prime in the Transformers movie. <laughs> it still makes me sad. We were we were watching that the toys that made us show, yeah. and like the, the, we you you came in uh, at the end of the Lego episode, right? But the one prior to that was the Transformers episode. Yeah. And, and like the, their, their, their mentality, like making that, that, that it's the animated feature from the, the yes. middle of the 80s. The only one 86. that counts. Um, that is like, they were basically like, let's kill off everybody. So there's going to be a brand new toy line next season. <laughs> that was their fucking mentality. <laughs> like making that movie. It's uh-huh. making an epic movie where we kill everybody. Right. So there's new toys to buy. <laughs> Hey, it fucking worked. I'm just saying. I mean, it it worked and it didn't work because it was shortly thereafter that I showed up at our elementary school and that there was this one kid who I was kind of friends with and he was friends with this other guy, right? And whether Spoilers he was, for Transformers the movie. Uh, whether he was friends with me or not kind of depended on what this other kid felt at the time and so i show up for like the first day of school the summer this this fall after transformers the movie has come out and i'm still way into transformers and they're like transformers no you transformers is over you can't i don't know if it was the movie or it was just like we got a little bit older or whatever i was still way into transformers and they just made me feel like a complete like shit leo is still into transformers and he's only a couple years younger than me <laughs> so um 
So, uh, so yeah, it's so vision. So why the kinda... fuck was Red Skull there? <laughs> why? I they I think they they wanted that from. Uh, I think I've read some interviews um, or, or or listened to some interviews. They wanted to tie that in. They needed a gatekeeper, right? They needed somebody plot wise to explain what the rules of what is about to happen happen. And they looked back at what they had and they say, well, Red Skull, we never saw the body, so let's. Let's bring him. Bring he got him in launched there. into space, so yeah. I guess he's there, and yeah. I guess he magically has that knowledge that he, of what he needs to do. Well, you need. <laughs> it's a fucking story. I know, but like Jesus, like have some, like introduce a new character. But what, that's the thing is that, that their philosophy, I think, has been, and this is why you don't see any of the Netflix characters um, in this movie. It's why you don't see any of the Agents of Shield characters. Is their philosophy is they want to tell this story with characters that you, if you've been following all these movies, know and love, and they're not introducing that many new people. Uh, Peter Dinklage and and uh, is it E Tree? Whatever. Peter Dinklage is one of the only new characters that gets introduced here. Him and the children of Thanos. Everybody else is somebody that you've grown and known about. And it, so people who are out there are like, oh, the Silver Surfer's got to be in this fucking movie. I'm like, no, he's not. Because if in the context of these movies, nobody has, has any idea who the fuck the Silver Surfer is. Yeah, I mean, it, doesn't Galactus have something to do with the plot of the Infinity Gauntlet? Um, I, he's, he's in there somewhere along with a lot of the huge cosmic beings. But Surfer shows up at the very beginning of Infinity Gauntlet 1. And basically, Bruce Banner does the same thing in this fucking movie. So they already have Bruce Banner falling out of the sky and into Doctor Strange's um, uh, house, which is like shot for shot what's in the fucking comic book, except it's Bruce Banner instead of Silver Surfer. And yet still, for months beforehand, people were like, Silver Surfer's going to be in it. It's going to be Silver Surfer. And I'm like, you guys are fucking isn't, isn't, stupid. Isn't that still a Fox property? It is still a Fox property, too. So I, people on the internet are dumb, Steve. I don't know if you're aware of this, but people on the internet are dumb. Yep. Including us, but uh, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> but but I like our dumb. I'm I'm happy with our particular. It's, it's, we color. have a good variety of dumb. We have. That's a that's a pretty good candidate. All right. Um. So all right, let's go back to the beginning of the movie. The very beginning. The very of the beginning movie. of the movie, and let's try to let's try to work our way through the through through the Infinity War. What 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 were you expecting coming in? Um, in terms of the the opening, I mean, I, look, what about that opening? We kind of talked about it, but what was the opening again? The opening is um, the like, distress call coming from uh, the Asgardian ship, and then Thanos already has the power stone, so he some he somehow got the power stone off off screen. Well, the power stone was in the collect. No, it wait. was with Novacor. Okay, the Novacor. Yeah, from the end of Guardians of the Galaxy, they left it there. Yeah. Um, when they did a great job of. of apparently, <laughs> yes. What was it? Uh, Charles Nelson Riley? No, fucking. <laughs> uh, John C. Riley. John C. Riley. <laughs> yeah, John C. Riley and Glenn Close. They were supposed to keep an eye on it, but never, never can trust those two. Yeah. Um, They're probably dead. Yeah, probably dead. But. That will give an, an opportunity to introduce Nova, the character, um, who's like the last of the Nova Corps, I think, in the comics or something like that. So that'll that'll be an opportunity somewhere down the line. They could they could show that part in a, in a flashback or something. What about those gold people from Guardians Two? I I don't know. Gold people. The gold people. Gold member. Gold finger. No. Gold vagina. No. I mean, I mean, I imagine that I imagine that down there is 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 gold on 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 those uh, young young lasses. I, I don't know. <laughs> Why don't you go find out? Chris? I, well, I'll, I don't have a spaceship, Steve. Right. I'm also not a gynecologist. There'd be no reason for me to check and see whether or not uh, they have gold. Just get a, uh, just get a, it'd be like Steph. I need a hall pass, or I'm going <laughs> no. to space and fuck a gold person. I don't, I don't even want to fuck the gold person. I would just. I just maybe, want to investigate the. Maybe there, if you could get to a an a, an interstellar strip club. Um, <laughs> Check that box, ladies and germs, <laughs> and where one of the um, uh, one of Aisha's people lived, right? Um, the sovereign, and there's a sovereign stripper. Um, and, 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 and it's, and it's a full nude, uh, not just topless. 
then you could find out if they if they have um, you know, without actually needing a hall pass or committing any uh, any adultery. You know that the, there's rules on Twitch, like the the, the yes. video streaming service that's used by a lot of people to stream video games and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's there's rules that you're not supposed to show your nipples. Is there? Yeah, wow. because uh, we uh, apparently you can't do that on Instagram either. There are some occasionally like some photographers I follow who. If they happen to post like an artful nude, they have to do these like they do these weird obscurings of the nipples. That it's obviously it's a nipple that's obscured, and I don't understand why. So is it is it only female nipples or is it male nipples too? Just female nipples. Oh, because like we were worried because like you know flashing the camera, we we'd get in trouble. Oh, streaming pinball uh, on Wednesday when we have leave. I I think male nipples are okay. Apparently, male nip as as long. As they're... What if I was wearing a pasty? Would that make it better or worse? Is it like when you're getting your eyes checked? Better <sighs> <That's>, or worse? <laughs> that's a good question. What if Steve, Steve was wearing a pasty? Would that be better or worse? Better or worse? <laughs> better or worse? For better or worse? Um, uh, I think, I think better. Okay. It's not that. I, it's not that With I don't tassels like on it and everything. I go like. Yeah, I mean, it's not that I don't like you, Steve, but I would rather not see your nipples. No. <laughs> Now I want to take him out. <laughs> oh my gosh! I don't know if I'm going to make it through the through the show. I like I all of a sudden have to really have to poop. But let's see if we can get through the entire. Do you want to pause? <laughs> but but I know how you feel about pooping. You you would expect me to take a shower after pooping. No, that, that's, I don't that's want me. my asshole to be dirty. If you're fine with it being dirty, then that's fine. All right. Well, then I'm because like, pod- like usually I have a I have I have a like. I, I don't have a, a clean break as far as my, my poo coming out. Okay. All right. I'm just saying that right now, I, like, I'm like i kind of doing the poo-poo dance in my chair, and, and I would rather not be. All right. Then pause the show. Pause the show. Okay. I'm going to pause the show. <sighs> I feel better. I'm glad you didn't shit your pants. I, I, I wouldn't have. I, 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 eventually, I, I would have. I would have. I would have. I would have said something, but I said something. And I, we, we. I don't know, like, because like when there's when, when there's times where I need to shit and I yeah I, I like can't, mm. I get really quiet. So I don't know how, oh. you, were, how you were able to <laughs> continuously. I got talent. I got carry skills. on. Let me ask you. It it it's it, 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 to get us back on topic. Which was? Do you think the Hulk's shits are green? No. <laughs> Do you think the Hulk poops at all, or does he wait until? Because we were having this conversation about the Hulk and Banner's relationship. Uh, I forget exactly how it came up, but do you think the Hulk waits and if the Hulk has to take a shit? He's like, you know what? Banner can be in charge now, and then Banner has to deal with Hulk-sized shits, and like that's part of the all right. So the relationship between Hulk and Banner. So like the the. The size of the shits would have to be in relation to the size of the the consumed things that you mm-hmm. you, you, you put inside you. Right. So you can't like have a, a giant shit yeah. if you didn't eat much. But the Hulk would have eaten a bunch, right? So the Hulk would have eaten a Hulk-sized meal. And then he's like, you know what? I'm just going to fuck with Banner right now. And I'm going to let Banner take control. And Banner's insides get all kinds of fucked up because there's too much shit. All right. So... Like I, I mean, imagine- I think this is a very important question on par with uh, does Mr. Fantastic, does every part of him stretch and what would it be like to have sex with the so thing? So like, and- like in One Piece, Luffy mm-hmm. has like uh, several gear, gears like that, that he can go into like he, because he, he's a rubber person like Mr. Fantastic. Okay. So mm-hmm. he has like a gear second that kind of like he, he accelerates the blood pumping through his body okay. because it's all of his like internal organs are made out of rubber as mm-hmm. well. So he can do that kind of thing. Okay. And it, it sort of is like a doping effect and he goes okay. really fast when he does mm-hmm. that. And then like he, he like inflates his bones and has this has a giant fucking fist and punches people and whatnot. I, I like, you know what? I, when I inflate my bone, it's usually with my giant fucking fist. Yeah, and he, he and then he like he goes gear four. He inflates his muscles and then mm-hmm. he has like and infuses them with hockey, not like the sport, but H A K I. Okay, uh, and becomes super powerful. But when mm-hmm. he uses that form, he uses a lot of the energy that he has in his body. So okay. if you are doing something with mm. the things that you're consuming you right. don't like because like you know ah uh, okay 
you yeah. don't poop as much because you're using that. For you're other using things. it all. So the Hulk doesn't. Maybe the Hulk doesn't poop at all. Yeah, because he's using all the things. Because he's so he fucking can, Hulk that he he has to eat like just his, to keep up his strength. The metabolism. He's using everything that he's he's eating, like okay. for you know. So then, does the Hulk have an anus? I mean, Banner does, right? Banner has an anus. Yeah. So then, yes. Yeah, yeah. So there is possibility. The Juggernaut if, has an anus. Oh yeah. Let's <laughs> let's not get ahead of ourselves, but. <laughs> The, the juggernaut i'm the juggernaut bitch um which was the thing he said when he first showed up a different juggernaut in x-men 3 the one everyone hates yeah i i, well, I was i was having a conversation with somebody earlier mm -hmm. trying to figure out which movie the juggernaut was in <laughs> it, was, it was x3 the last stand or just x-men the last Stand. i don't even know if they had was the it the same it. actor no okay no yeah no that timeline is all that it's they don't even try they don't care well yeah i mean there was uh there was arc archangel or whatever yeah and to both, say <laughs> in both that and days oh, no the the apocalypse yeah yep so it's like oh what <laughs> yeah it's, it's you know that, that doesn't matter he can he, he they they screwed up the when when they went back to days of future past they screwed it up he was born in 10 years 20 years or earlier yeah somehow and, and was one of apocalypses that's why i i will be very glad if disney gets to buy fox and they can just straighten the whole thing out if they don't get to buy fox i'm just going to pay attention to the deadpool movies because the deadpool movies have an internal consistency um despite the end <laughs> um and uh, and you know what deadpool x-force anything that comes out of that i'll pay attention to that and the rest of these x-men movies i I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if they, they need to make any more X-Men movies. I mean, they already are. They've made a Dark Phoenix, and they made New Mutants, uh, both of which are in the can, but then getting reshot because of, I don't know what. Because of Deadpool? <laughs> Probably because of Deadpool, yeah. Um, although that was the that's the fucking weird thing. There was a cameo... I was still, I'd rather talk about Infinity War, but since I brought up Deadpool, um, the the cameo of the, the character's the X-Men when they're when he's like there's never been anybody around here and then there's a door open and there's uh, a couple of X-Men that's the X-Men from the 60s 70s 80s not the X-Men from the pre it, it's and of course they could do that cuz they were filming the other fucking X-Men movie at the same time so they So yeah that's 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 why I mean, it's like you get like Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart and yeah. all the fucking people <laughs> No they, those those guys they got better things to do Yeah um, like like Patrick Stewart's just hanging out with his dog and you know, yeah, yeah, being a being a very nice man. It's he, I guess he's allowed to do that. Yes, that's what he does. That is that is that is his job now. I think. I, I mean, I being I a very imagine, nice man. I imagine he he if gets the right part will take it. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, like I think he's he's pretty happy like hanging out and and being a, a nice person with his I, with his animal. I would like to just. And, the, the, I, I think he's married. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, hanging out with his, his spouse and his puppy. Spouse and his puppy. That's the way. To, that's the way to do it, Steve. Right. I'm just. I was gonna say. It's a so, good way to retire. It seems like Tony Stark and Pepper Potts might might have been fine if they just got a puppy. That would have that would have been a good good end to their story. But then fucking Doctor Strange had to come out of the uh, fucking whatever and be like, "You got to come with me, Tony. Come with me if you want to live." You gotta come back with me. <laughs> you gotta come back. There's something, something wrong with your kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're mixing up the timelines again. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 do you think Pepper is pregnant? I don't know. Yes, sure. <laughs> like that, that, that was a part of the story that I gave zero shits about. Yeah. Apparently, they filmed two versions of that. Um, they had like a whole Tony, like they had a lo much longer version of that sequence. It didn't work. Uh, so they went and filmed the two of them somewhere else. That didn't work. So basically they ended up going back to uh, what we had, which was just a really small version of the whole Tony and Pepper's Day at the Park uh, sequence. Um, yeah. I, was, I think it's just, it was there to needlessly tug on heartstrings. Yeah. But it didn't, it, like, the end where, where Peter's, like, like, I don't feel so good, which has been the thing that yeah. everybody is saying <laughs> everywhere on the internet. Right. Yeah. Um, 
is is was so much more moving than yeah. anything that they tried to do with the Pepper and Tony right. thing. And yet, you could make the argument that that Tony facing the idea of possibly being a parent that that bit helps set up at least in this movie why he would have such a relationship with Peter, right? Because if you imagine... Because he's a, I will be your father figure. Take your tiny hand in mine. I will be the one to hold you till the end of time. There was a guy that used to sing that song at karaoke at Boomers. <laughs> and I've, I, I've, been, I've been sort of... I, I've sort of... Uh, wanted to go back there but i don't like it's it's i i want to go back but i also don't want to go back back in time no not back in time but go back to boomers and do some karaoke like on a thursday night see Mm. what the fuck is up over there like you know fucking shit 10 years later oh my god because we used to go like like 2007 2008 Mm -hmm. that was that was the time when that was the time to remember that was the time to go to like because it won't last forever shut up the that was like right before I left for North Carolina. That mm. that was the place to be. We like I think the original reason why we started going there is because yeah. uh, on Thursday nights, uh, uh, our friend Aaron was in a bowling league at the Brunswick, which is right oh, next door. Right yeah, right, get right. a little bit local for you. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, the Brunswick and Lowell, and uh, so um, Brian and I would go and mm. and do karaoke next door. Yeah. And then she would come over after, after the bowl. After the bowl, I'd like at first it was just like us hanging out while she bowled, but then mm-hmm. it would turned into us doing karaoke, yeah, and then and she came over singing. and joined us sing. after she bowled. Yeah, um, and you know it's weird. Like, uh, like I'd be out until like one in the morning sometimes, noon mm. or midnight, noon, midnight, one in the morning, <laughs> and you know that wasn't that far, so getting yeah. home wasn't really an issue. But like. The next day, mm. I would get up at six in the morning and go to work at fucking Hannaford's. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, it's not that far a drive. Yeah. If you just slept in the parking lot and then drove over to Hannaford's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that 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 kind of. I well, I did. I pulled the late night on Friday. I on Friday, I almost took the day off from work, but I looked at what had to be done, and I was like, I can't do it because there was going to be nobody in the office. But I I personally just had too much stuff to catch up on. And so what I ended up doing is what I was going to do during the day was do a double feature of Deadpool 2 and Solo. And so I ended up waiting and doing that after uh, work and after supper. And what I went out and I was out fucking way too late for me. Uh, did you did you you didn't fall asleep? I didn't fall asleep. The second movie, which nope. was Solo, I imagine. So, yep. Solo was the I, I took in Solo second. Yeah. So uh, you, I imagine you liked it less <laughs> um, than Deadpool 2. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I kind of like them both about the same. All right. Um, I mean, it, I I like Deadpool and I like Deadpool too. I'm not the biggest fan. Like I I I like what they're doing. They're having fun. I like the self self referential humor, and yet there's absolutely no substance to it. Um, at all. They try to have a little bit more substance in Deadpool too. Yeah, and, and it, I I got annoyed by it. Yeah, yeah. It's like it, the the first act. I was like, enough. Like yeah. we don't need the fucking emotion here. It's just like, yeah. Let's just do silly fucking him chopping people up. Right. Like, and it, they had some of that emotion in the first one, but it was. It was tongue in cheek. It what, what was wasn't even tongue in cheek. It wasn't somebody dying. It yeah. was a relationship, and it was like a relationship and breakup scenario, romantic comedy thing. This was like mourning the loss of a loved one, which was too heavy for fucking Deadpool, right? Like I, um, and so, like, I, I get it, but anyway, so I, I, you know, lots of people on the on the internet are finding reasons not to like Solo, um, and I. I'm just sort of if you don't like it, cool. But also, don't make me feel bad for liking it. There's so many, there's so few things in the world that people like that I don't think we should bag on anybody. Well, there's somebody else made this point, and I'm just I'm cribbing from them. But I I feel like we should not be bagging on anybody for liking the shit that they like. If somebody gets pleasure out of something, uh, with rare exceptions, if like if they get pleasure out of something that causes harm to someone else, that's a different story. But if they get pleasure out of watching Solo, there's nothing wrong with that. Chris, the, people are gonna make fun of people for for things 
no matter what. And and we on this show have made fun of plenty of people for liking things. I, this so let's not be hypocrites here. I, I'm trying. I maybe I'm trying to turn over a new leaf here. Is what I'm okay, saying. Okay, let's be less entertaining. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that I'm going to stop talking about how the the art in Sandman is the worst art in comic book history, but... A um, real New Warriors <laughs> fan would never fucking say that. <laughs> but th- that's the thing. You shouldn't judge me for being a real New Warriors fan. I'm I, If I think of myself as a fan, I'm a fan. Speedball. Who are you to deny me that? Speedball. Speedball. What a that's f- a character we need in the MCU. What just... the fuck? Like... <laughs> Don't they realize that Speedball is a combination of heroin and cocaine? Uh, maybe. There was a. On the, I'm going back to that toys show again, and like uh, one of the guys, uh, the one of the characters that he was naming for the robots, uh, he was like, it was like headlights or something like that, or uh, this is the Transformers one. Yeah, and okay. they're like, yeah, and you know, he didn't realize that the. That was like a, a slang for uh, erect nipples. Oh, ooh, ooh, I, don't, I don't know if I realized that. Was it? He- is it headlights or? I don't know. I always thought it was oompa loompas. What? <laughs> or or, or tatas? Or, or t- two dinklages? <laughs> two dinklages. <laughs> have you got a Have you got a pair of dinklages under that shirt? Yeah. Or are you just happy to see me? That's uh, that's boob normative. <laughs> Okay, have you got? Uh, uh, you say, oh, okay. I, I don't know how to react to that. I don't know either. <laughs> Let's just move on. Um, is there is there anything else in, in Infinity War we haven't we haven't we haven't gotten to? We, there's plenty there's of a whole stuff bunch on, of yeah, okay. like so uh, we think we got as far as Tony Stark and Pepper Potts, like at the beginning. At the beginning, yeah, yeah. So like they they got a uh, fight a space thing after Tony leans on the wrong thing in Doctor Strange's house. They got a fight. Some some children of Thanos. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think of the the particular parent? Like so, Doctor Strange and Iron Man together. Like, did, was that amusing to you? Annoying? Uh, could take or leave it. I mean, like, well, it was fine. Okay. Um, what about? It's uh, like you're here. Like, was this was this cheese good with this red wine? <laughs> was this Doctor Strange good with your uh, Iron Man? Did the, did. did Doctor Strange pair well with uh, with your Iron Man. Yeah, it was it was a good pairing. Um, what do you think of the Hulk story? So like he he's there at the beginning, right? Like he tries to beat the shit out of Thanos and fails. And then every time Banner tries to bring the Hulk out for the rest of the movie, the Hulk's like, "Fuck you." There's there's uh there's dunderheads out there. They're like, "It's Loki. He's he's Hulk now." Oh, and f- that's why you can't become Hulk because he's Loki now. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. He almost did it once. Like, what the fuck? People on the internet are fucking stupid. Yes. <laughs> See, now can we just criticize them for liking things or disliking them? I'm not them? criticizing them for liking things. I'm criticizing them for having stupid fucking theories. Like, I, you know, I just, that's, that's fucking dumb. I mean, I'm, 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 so I'm off, like I'm done teaching for the semester, but it's, it's still the same things that piss me off when I'm having to read a poorly constructed argument in a paper piss me off when I hear poorly constructed arguments on the internet. I've already talked about the fucking Silver Surfer thing. And it's like, just look at the fucking evidence in front of you. And this is another thing. Like, he did almost make it happen once. And he did like have it kind of like the Hulk was there. I, people are fucking stupid. I think it's, uh, he's got, um, I don't know, what is it, ED? Uh, he's got, he's got HD. Yeah. Hulk, uh, Hulk, uh, Hulk, Hulk, dysfunction. Yeah. 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 And maybe, maybe a little bit of ED. I mean, he, he had a chance to get together with, with, uh, with Black Widow and he was like, I, I, I physically can't. Yeah, that would be... I mean, if if the if the rest of him gets as large as as as, as his body, then mm. yeah, I mean that would be problematic. Yeah. But that line relies on a foreknowledge of from, that line from Age Ultron relies on a foreknowledge of um fucking uh, the Incredible Hulk, which a lot of people never saw. In the Incredible Hulk, he and Betty are about to get it on, and he's got the wristwatch on, and he notices as they're about to get it on that uh, his heartbeat is getting too close to Hulk range. And so that's why he can't have sex with Betty. But at this point, he's supposed to have mastered the fucking thing. You know, he tells Cap in, in First Avengers, like, 
I'm always angry. That's my secret. So he supposedly has it under control or some shit. So why couldn't he have sex with Black Widow? Maybe Joss Whedon's a lazy fucking writer. No, I'm just kidding. Maybe they just need to like make another standalone fucking Hulk movie. Uh, that's not gonna happen. Oh no, because Universal owns the owns the rights to distribute it. Disney doesn't want to give that shit up. So they'll just keep putting him in other movies. And in fact, that's that's the other bit of of evidence as to why fucking. Um, Loki is not the Hulk is because this whole thing when they were doing interviews for Thor Ragnarok have I bored you yet? Yes. But finish. (laughs) When they were doing interviews for Thor Ragnarok um, they talked to Ruffalo about the fact that they can't do another Hulk movie and uh, Disney came to him Kevin Feige came to him and were like so if we were good if we could do a Hulk movie what would you want to happen in it? And he said, I want this and this and this. And they're like, well, so what if we took that and we made that the Hulk subplot over these next three movies? So one of the things Ruffalo wanted, obviously, was this Banner and Hulk arguing with each other and Hulk deciding he doesn't want to come out. Like, And so the third part of the, of the sort of Hulk trilogy would be whatever happens in, in Avengers 4. He didn't disappear. He didn't disappear. I ju- I, I, I'm just trying to wrap my brain around who, around who disappeared. I think Rabbit with. was the only Guardian that, that made it out of there alive. Yep. Yep. Rabbit was the only uh, only Guardian. Um, so that means we can't have a Guardians in the Galaxy movie for a while. Yeah. Well, in fa- but in fact, that is one of the next ones that's going to go into production. So that the, the really interesting question people have raised is how are they going to promote Spider-Man Homecoming 2? When Spider-Man... Out a couple of months after Infinity War. So there would theoretically be trailers and shit, but everybody saw him disappear. So that, like, so it, maybe it, it's, like, in the timeline, it's happening in between... No, it's supposed to happen... They have Well, they, might have cha- they may change this in production, but they have said it happens when he comes back from Infinity War. Now, maybe that was all misdirection, but the notion was, you know, that... The first movie happened right after he'd been on this big adventure, which was Civil War. And the second movie would be him having to go back to school after he'd helped save the universe. Right. Um, so, But he can't help save the universe if he doesn't exist. Yeah. Maybe they're in the Soul Stone. Maybe they're all trapped in there. Yeah, and they have to break out. They have to break out. Like that game Breakout. Exactly like that game Breakout. What happens in that game Breakout? Um, Do they break out? There's a ball, and it mm. goes, and you have a little paddle, and it... It's oh. like Pong, only one player. Oh, okay. I prefer things that are one player, especially with my Pong. Um, so, yeah, so, 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 uh, Dusted People, um, Dusted People, uh, Dusty Roads. There's only, like, I think the only, like, all the original Avengers were, were. Yep, all the original Avengers. Uh, Tony's out in space, but, um, but yeah, he's but still all around. the original Avengers are still around. What I heard them say in an interview is that they, they constructed this ending and who disappears around who they needed for the second movie and who they felt like they didn't have as much of a story for. Because they didn't want you to just see your sort of uh, B players or, or uh, they wanted you to see that there were consequences. So it had to be not um, uh, Okoye. You needed to see T'Challa. You needed to see the Black Panther disappear. Um, it couldn't be... Just the guard. You had to see somebody out there in space, in this case, Peter, disappear, right? Um, you needed to see Bucky, right? So that Steve could have something. And so I think they've grouped it around so that this next one can have much more of an uh, original Avengers. I guess Ant-Man is going to be a factor in um, in Avengers 4. Uh, and then Captain Marvel, who will have been introduced in her own movie. Uh, Which is the next one? Oh, wait, the no, next one is Ant-Man Man and the Wasp. Yeah. And then, and then Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. Which is set in the 1990s. Ant-Man and the Wasp is the interesting one because when is that set? Like if it's set after this shit, then that's, yes. it's weird that they'll be like, oh, let's have a weird... Like, yeah. Yeah. It's it's really weird if, that, if it's set after that. So I gotta imagine it's set before or uh, concurrent... Or I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's it's happening at the same time as the events of Infinity War. Right. Yeah. Maybe they're trying to because they. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm interested to see it. I liked the first one. Did you like the first Ant Man? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. I mean, Paul Rudd is, is a charming man. Yeah. He's, he's, 
he's a nice fellow. He's he he he's a a latter day Patrick Stewart. Maybe one day Paul Rudd is just going to be a charming old man with a dog. But you know, it's the, the same or thing goes with like you know once once the straw hat sketch of the new world. Mm. They, I, I'm out. I'm out of drink. I can't drink. Yeah, it. it's fine. <laughs> Um, they, they, like they, when they got to Dressrosa, there was like a, a fuck ton of char- new, new characters introduced. Mm. And so basically what Oda had to do was like say, okay, half of you are, are going away for a sec, mm-hmm. which was more than a sec cause Dressrosa was way too fucking long. <laughs> but then like the other half like ended up going to Whole Cake Island, like, mm-hmm. you know, so it was like Luffy and these folks and then Luffy and these folks and hopefully... Uh. At Wano, everybody gets back together and there's a whole fucking crazy... So it's like Lost Season 3. Sure. Yeah. I don't remember what happened. Oh, Lost, Lost Season 3, uh, at the end of Season 2... Oh, the others. Uh, at the end of Season 2, the others abduct um, the uh, the f- big big players, Kate and Sawyer and Jack and Hurley. And then Hurley gets sent back to tell everyone what was, uh, what was up. Um, and so, like, everybody's kind of split up at the beginning of, of season three so that they can spend the first however many episodes really introducing you to some of the others, which a lot of people didn't like, but I thought was interesting because my favorite parts of any of those stories, I don't know if it would be my favorite part of One Piece, but my favorite part of the X Men back when I started reading them was the part where there were um, port. the port. <laughs> I don't know where that pronunciation came from. Uh, was, it was the part. A, it was a good port. It was a good port. <laughs> Uh, where it was a good port. I was drinking it with my cheese <laughs> and uh, Spider Man disappearing. <laughs> um, and uh, it was with all the X Men were broken up into small little uh, little units. There was one unit that was Wolverine, Psylocke, and Jubilee, and they were off in Asia fighting ninjas. And mm-hmm. then you'd have an episode where Rogue was off in the wasteland, uh, not the wasteland, uh, the, the, the 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 Savage Land with Magneto. Um, and, uh, it was, it's just my favorite. Let's go, bub. That's my favorite period of, uh, of X-Men history. And then they, then they get back together and go off to space and it's, it's just bullshit after that. Um. Welcome to die. <laughs> anything, anything you want to say about Deadpool 2? Oh, the, actually, the, bring, to bring Deadpool back up in mm. Marvel vs. Capcom 3, mm. uh, if you are playing as Deadpool. Yeah. Against Magneto. Yeah. Deadpool says welcome to die. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that from? That's... From the X-Men, like the, the six person. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so when Magneto shows up. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so Deadpool will say that. Yeah, because like he is a meta he's, character. He's a very meta character. And I mean, so he... he's referencing, you know, the old fucking 90s stand up arcade he, beat him up as he should hey i i love he i love i love his that's some of my favorite stuff is uh all of the the jokes the jokes are the fa- the jokes and the blood are the are the best parts of deadpool i missed the sex there was a little bit of sex in the first deadpool and there wasn't uh, there wasn't any sex unless you count when um uh when uh colossus puts the uh the live wire up juggernaut's butt yeah i mean that's kind of kind of I mean, but it's not, it's non consensual. So it's, yeah. So it's, oh, it's, shit. Is that Colossus raping the juggernaut? Right. Yeah. Fuck, that got dark. Um, but he's the, he's the juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> that, 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 I, I, I laughed at that scene, but I also like thought, it, I think there's a point where they give us one last shot of the juggernaut's legs and ass twitching in the water as everyone's walking away at the very end. I don't know. I, that that might have been a bridge too far. More like a bridge too short. <laughs> um, and I like Negasonic the, Teenage Warhead. I, yeah. I, I think she's she's what was, a gem. What was, her, what was her girlfriend's name? Um, is it, no, not it's not Yukio. Um, I think it might be Yukio. It might be Yukio, and not not Yu Gi Oh, which is the 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 card game. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's 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 something. And she just keeps. I think her only line is like high wade. Yeah. Like, like no, she, 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 she says uh, some other things yeah. here and there, but like, I I, I like that he he he. Th- oh, she's just nice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Yukio. Yeah. It, it, I just like I love that he is. Um, <laughs> I love that he's so like thinks that they're a cute couple, and I don't know. It's just it's, it warms uh, warms my little uh, my little heart. That 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 the the. the 
You know what what fucks me up though? What? Okay. So my wife is watching Riverdale. Have you seen Riverdale? But the, it's, the, it's, the it's, dark it's, version of the dark of, version of, of Archie. Archie. No. Right? So she's watching Riverdale and Jughead in this in this Riverdale uh TV show is not gay. What? Now, now I've gotta say, not only is he not gay, Jughead is dating Betty. Archie and Veronica are dating, and Jughead is dating Betty. Alright? I I thought like the whole thing about Archie is that like he was like should I decide on Betty or Veronica? I and maybe that's what it was in the first season. I don't know, but I read an awesome short story which maybe I've talked about um, by this guy Luke Geddes in his book I I am a magical teenage princess, um, and it's called Betty and Veronica, and it's about Betty and Veronica getting together, ah. and in that I'm pretty sure Jughead is gay, and so but that is my dif- that is my canonical. Uh, Archie thing now because that story is so goddamn good so then I go over and I see my wife watching Riverdale it's actually not a terrible show for what it is but I'm like how could no Jughead he's well I think the, the whole idea he's of a, Jug- he's, a, he's a gay young man it's, uh, it, and it's okay what was it that that all came out came, came about with uh, Chasing Amy right mm, mm, that that's very right lengthy conversation at the beginning of the that movie that is right I forgot about that I've blocked out most of Kevin Smith's uh, oeuvre from my from my brain. I Why? know I used to be obsessed. I, I don't know. I just I, 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 I've I've like, forgotten about it. Like I mean, uh, like, uh, not intentionally. I just sort of like I you know I fell out of love with his work and then chasing Amy. Chasing like, Amy is the one that I, I still I like, have very. Fond it's still. Of. I mean, like Clerks is the only one that I I will consistently go back to. Mm-hmm. Um, just because it's just. It's a, it's it was it was very much a time and place. Mm-hmm. Like Mallrats is okay. Yeah, uh, Chasing Amy is good, but like after that, it's like okay, what are you what are you doing anymore? Chasing Amy was the one where I fell in love with. It. I saw I fell asleep watching Clerks and Mallrats at a friend's house, um, and then years later fell in love with them. But well, Chasing we, I, Amy was the one that that uh, that did it. For we me. saw every single one of them except for Clerks in the theaters. Mm. Like, because, you know, we, I, I remember... I drove to fucking New Jersey to see Dogma before it was released um, with Kevin Smith and, and a bunch of other View Us Universe uh, did you nuts. Did you go to the Quick Stop or anything? Or was it I did, there? yeah. John Martin and I went down there twice. Once for that, once for, like, another thing. And, and we stopped by the Quick Stop and the place where uh, Holden and Banky's apartment, or the exterior of Holden and Banky's apartment, and uh, the swing set that Holden and Alyssa sit on. Yeah. It was weird. Like I remember, my like I, I I sort of only vaguely remember this because like mm. when I was at my dad's house, I was like kind of going through some shit, like right. just throwing things out, yeah. and I found some things, uh, just some shit that I'd written down, and I guess the the plan was to mm. go to to Jersey, yeah, like in between senior year and like starting college. Oh, that's fine. Just to do that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, and it never came to fruition. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, that was the plan, and I don't know why we never did. Yeah, I, don't, I we we'll have to. I mean, like you know, Matt listens to the show, and he was yeah. around back then. Maybe he could uh, he could help enlighten me or why we never fucking went. But yeah. you know, or I come to think of maybe I only mean, went once. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I went once or twice with John. I definitely stopped by there. We had friends Stephanie and I did who got married the year after we graduated college. So. Uh, summer of 99 and we stopped uh, they were getting married in jersey and so we stopped there as well um i had a for whatever reason um i think it was an a and w root beer bottle that i got at the quick stop and i drank it and then i washed it out and i but i saved it in uh like a box of memorabilia for a really long time just like a bottle of root beer an empty bottle of root you beer. should have got like you should have bought a pack of smokes and never smoked I, them yeah, I don't know if I could have done that. I think I would have had. I and I don't. I don't. I didn't want to be a smoker. I. I. I it's like if I bought a six pack, I couldn't. I would have to drink it as as disgusted with. Uh, I remember because I smoked I for a really long time, and you. I, I remember your brother tried. Yeah. He he bought a couple packs of cigarettes, and I think he was just like, "Now this this is gross." Yeah. And he just gave me the rest of his pack, and I'm like, <laughs> "Perfect." <laughs> hey, it works. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I, I I think you know I should have bought a pack of smokes. Yeah, you, I don't think you, you would have been like, oh my god, I have to put this gross thing in my mouth and light it on fire. Yeah, no, I mean I I think that about put a, putting a gross thing in my mouth and lighting it on fire. That um, what 
a penis. We, we, I was trying to. I was, I was trying to. I was trying to imagine uh, filleting a. a, a would it be penis. better if, like, you were smoking tobacco out of a out of a out of a bong? Out of a uh, out of a penis shaped bong? Yeah. So would that help you? I don't know. No, no, I don't think so. No, I was just trying to think of something amusing that involved a penis and fire. And I. And Why nothing, would you like if you're gonna if you're gonna give a, a gross bl- penis and fire? Because you mentioned it was a gross thing. Well, yeah. I mean, I think most penises are gross. Most peni. Yeah. A penis well, is a gross thing, isn't it? Sure. It is. It's 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 pretty fucking gross. You're the one who wanted to suck on one. I I I I still think they're gross. All right, then <laughs> Like I, I can I can I can I can I can, you know, have wanted to at some point in my life and and also think that they're gross. That's probably what stopped me. It's like the idea of the idea of 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 how gross that fucking thing is. I don't know. Right. Maybe it's just that my penis is gross. Maybe I should. Maybe I'm projecting. Yeah. Maybe everyone like, else's penis is is because if I watch it, if I happen to watch an adult film, and there's a penis there, you're not I, you're not like grossed out. Yeah. No. I actually I, I actually I happen to find uh, uh you, you know the, that that stuff mildly. Uh, it's the end of the show. Uh, <laughs> my, my, my my erogenous. Well, you just got to tell Stephanie. Yeah. I need a hall pass <laughs> so I can find a good looking penis to put in my mouth. But I, how do you find a good looking penis? Is that like something you can do on Tinder or something? Or like, or or, or get, yeah, I mean, get, sure. Get, like you could be like grinder. You know, yeah, I think grinder. Grinder, grinder. So you for, like? I wonder if like you can filter by just pictures of dicks. I well, I don't. I think isn't it connected to your Facebook or something? Oh, I don't have a Facebook anymore. So oh. fuck, I can't. I can't go on Grinder. Oh well, I'm, I'm sure you'll figure something out. Hey, if you like this episode, uh, leave us a. Leave <laughs> I'm us a surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Send us an email uh, to tell us how much you loved it uh, to hotatclarkwoods.com or leave us a review. We'd love uh, five stars or, or six stars or, or ten. All the stars. All the stars. Leave us all the stars. And uh, all the stripes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Ha- give us a, and shoot us an email. Yes. Hot Hot Clark, I said it. Oh, fuck. I was, I, you weren't paying attention. I, yeah. You were too busy thinking about penises. No. 